there is only one Swedish player on Fish123, which of course is... Oh, do you know what? Robin. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, who else would be Swedish? <laughs> T-Sack is Greek. The others are English. Oh, no, I, you know, I, was remember, I was trying to remember which one was Greek and which one was Swedish. That would be T-Sack, hence the name. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the name. Yeah, that's a very long name where someone's just played countdown and gone vowel, vowel, vowel. So a little bit like Welsh, where you know to well, play countdown opposite. in Welsh, you just say consonant constantly, uh, which is always good fun. Anyway, getting underway now, it's going to be looking like an A hit. Always like to see a bit of A. Bit of A going on, as you say, through the underpass. Surreal first to breach through, lands the shot. Luzza does take an early dive into the round. The flashbangs come through, and they're starting to push on through connector. Weber lines up the shots around the corner, but gets taken down. Smuya lands his. Mighty Max, though, chimes on in. So now on a 4v3 retake, they get limited even further. Now playing with two. As Smuya pushes up close, and he's doing the damage. It's just Aaron now has the USP, has some armor as well. Lands the shot that he needs to. Low HP on the rest of Fish, but it still has his work cut out for him to go for the retake. Yeah, not an easy situation Aaron's been put on. We know he's an experienced player, but this may be asking too much. Surreal just playing with him. Jenko is low. He's the one player who may be able to get a little bit of damage on too. But he's not going to take it. He's got a kit. He's got armor. Why take the jewels when you don't have to? Could find the easy kill here. Jenko surviving there on 8 HP. Surreal going to take the peak, chasing him down, but Ooh. it's not going to work. Aaron finds the kill and escapes with not only his life, but also a kit and armor. So going into the next round, going to be a little bit equipped. But the aggression there from Smuya, just absolute disrespect. Dives into Hatch, dives into Hutt, just getting kills left, right, and center, denying that retake. There was absolutely no opportunity there for Endpoint to try and get themselves back into that. With only one man alive, that's Aaron trying to do the work, but it's not going to work out for him. Who are we missing? Uh, we've got Luzza on Endpoint. I obviously have written these down wrong, um, but you know what? These things happen. You can't blame me. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like that's really indicative of, of Endpoint not quite having stacked up against some some of these strong fraggers that we've that we're seeing coming in now. So they're not used to that aggression. They're not used to being 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 pushed this hard. And, and I think that came to bear in this round. Let's see if they can uh, take a little bit stronger into this one with some sneaky angles. But surreal. We'll spot that one out. A yeah, nice kill coming through there from Weber. They're going to find the double shutdown over towards that A long position. Now holding with the Deagle. He knows there's another player there. He's not going to risk it trying to go for that AK-47, especially with Smuya on the other side. It is not worth the risk. Now the double peak comes in. Pulse just helping his teammate out. One, two, and Smuya demolishes the defense. Now the quick rotate comes in. Smuya has the bomb. And the remaining two CT players heading over. It is a two versus three. But with Mighty Max now on the site, this could get very dangerous. Aaron, all he has to do is pester, put them under a bit of pressure, give Mighty Max the opportunity to find the kill here. He's hiding, he's perching. t sat getting close, will find the first, but now Mighty Max on top oh! one, two, fight the kill, can he find the third? He's gonna get away with his life intact. And now all he has to do is play. 40 seconds remain, there is so much time for oh. t sat and it's not going to go Mighty Max's way. T-Sec finds the kill, and Fish, one, two, three, take their second round. As you say, Mighty Max has been popping off this weekend. He's been having some great performances, and that was yet another one able to do the damage. If you notice before, into that round, they'd bought up four AKs. They'd invested really heavily into that second round. What that's done is it means that Fish now have to reinvest onto those MAC-10s uh, and go back for some of those AKs, but they're going to keep their economy very, very low, allowing Endpoint to storm into the, the fourth round after this full eco here. So very, very good work on that A bomb site. Mighty Max finding the angle, fish grouping up a little bit too much uh, for their own good and paying the price for it. Yeah, Loza trying to play with Robin there, but it's not going to work. Luckily, Weber comes in. His pistols have been pretty strong so far, but these MAC-10s are so fast, so versatile. They can go wherever they want. They've taken drop control. Pulse will find one to Smooja, but it's traded straight back out. Surreal finds another Pulse. He's been heard, and T-Sack cleaning up onto Mighty Max. Surreal now just needs to close down this Ooh. frag, and he will. Just don't overpeak. On low HP, there's no point in doing it. Weber not going to find anything. Surreal shuts him down, and that is the old man down. Three kills there for Surreal, racking up the cash. Could even drop an AWP over to his teammate or hold on to it himself. We know he's a proficient AWPer. Why not? Going to hold on to the MAC-10, though, going into this. Why not? Play a little, especially when you have, you're have up against rifles. Sometimes, I'm not advocating it, but sometimes keeping a MAC-10 just gives you that extra little edge. Dive in, have a bit of confidence. And something as well to note, Endpoint, they haven't gone for any helmets there. They, had, they have no helmets. So if he's able to jump out drop or, or jump out uh, fast towards B, he could land those headshots and get those instant kills that the MAC-10 is so useful for. Uh, so keeping that on board, not necessarily the worst decision. If they know that Endpoint tends to go for the, the no helmet and, and opt to go for more utility into these rounds, 
they could be capitalizing on that beautifully. But as I said, their economy relatively low. They had to reinvest both rounds so far, uh, which means that they are going to take a little bit of a hit when it comes to that strength moving forwards. So I feel like Endpoint maybe have a little bit more strength moving into this round if they're able to take the longer duels against the MAC-10. Um, but if Fish have read into it, if they've learned from, from watching previous VODs, from watching uh, anything else that, that Endpoint have been dealing with, they might have the heads up on this play. Orp in the hands of Luzzer, though, that is a very, very powerful tool, especially in the man Joe Luce's hands. He is a monster, a demon, a devil in disguise. Let's see what he can make happen. He's going to go for the straight peak. Not too aggressive hit. The Molotov will come in and force him back. A little bit of positional control for Robin, but the main play is heading over towards that B bomb site. It's a three man play. Not risking that fourth, especially when you have the Orp. You may want to risk it. Robin is playing with fire as he will flash back. Luzzer just maintaining a bit of control over towards that A bomb site. Means Smuya has the opportunity to head out onto the plateau where he is so at home. Flash comes in. Now he's out. He gets to play with his sandbox. Mighty Max on the statue will flash up, spot out Smuya, giving his teammates a little bit of information, but is it enough? We'll have to wait and see. Mighty Max does get spotted out by Smuya, but he turns the corner instead. It's going to be Aaron in the crosshairs. That's the headshot and turns, finds a second. That's two players immediately wiped out by Smuya. t finds a third, and they have the B-bomb site with no chance of a retake here. They're just going to hold it. Endpoint have to save. Yeah, that's a straight save call. No point going in for that. Smuya, just the all-out aggression. You can see Mighty Max when he's putting that smoke down. He thought, okay, I've got a couple of seconds here. Smuya's not going to go straight in for that peak. But as soon as he hears that smoke, as soon as he sees that go out, he goes straight in. Take Mighty Max down. Opens up the whole bomb site, especially with that drop control. There's nothing that can be done by Fish. Now it's just a clean up. Weber will find himself a nice little headshot onto Robin. But apart from that, there is nothing going the way of Endpoint. These guns are so, so important. Holding onto this AWP, holding onto this M4, going into the next round, there is not a lot of money to play with. At least Weber and Laza may be able to drop out one player with nothing, but they have to hold on to these now. High pressure situation. Orp is retreating, but Weber's going to go down. Laza has to hold on to this now. He is their, in their only hope. He is R2-D2, and he's made it through. Still, one Orp versus a full buy from Fish is not going to be great. And again, you see Surreal holding on to that MAC-10. He's said, right, we got that last kill. We know they're not going to go in for the full force. He can play again, really aggressive, build up that cash, get in their face. And, and you can see the confidence building now for Fish. They have had a storm into the first couple of rounds of this half, into the first stages of this game. They are looking very, very strong. Surreal playing over towards that drop with that MAC-10 yet again. Knows that they're not going to have the armor on board. They will be just playing a little bit up close and personal once more over on the B site. They are stacking it on up for endpoint though, as A site just gets overwhelmed. Fish, just take the site for free. There's no, there's no resistance there. They stack the site. They get the, they've got the coin flip wrong, and they might look for the retake. I don't think Luz is going to go for aggression. They want to keep that AWP on board, but other than that, it's just going to be Fish taking the round. Yeah, easy stuff so far. Surreal just baiting and switching the bombs down. All he wants to do is keep them pinned in. If they push him, happy days. He builds up a bit of cash. But there's no point ready for endpoint. No point giving him the kills. They're not losing anything. They're not gaining anything. Lazo will find one. Pulse onto Surreal. That's the first time he's died since the first round. So good bit of economic damage being done. But apart from that, not too much to shout home about the remaining three fish players. I mean, the money is so strong right now. They don't mind hunting. They don't mind risking a couple of rifles. It does mean endpoint picks them up. But going into the next round, they're going to be full buying anyway. There's not been a reset. So it's not too much of a concern for the fish lads. And right now, Endpoint have to come up with a way of stopping them. They have to find a way of putting them back in their place. Well, finally, the MAC-10 is out of the hands of fish. And instead, Endpoint are going to be able to buy up those helmets as well, picking up all the utility they need. You can see Smuya taking seven kills already in the first five rounds of the game. He is yet again on a tear. Uh, he's been putting in the numbers and it seems like they're going to go over to B, turn their aggression there. The bomb is over that side as well, stacking up for the drop and seems like Endpoint putting a little bit of pressure towards that B long, but Fish yet to pull the trigger, not going for a super aggressive start as they have done in the previous couple of rounds. Yeah, lots of even falling back, so no presence once more up towards that A long position. That means Weber is very much on his own here. Is he going to be aware of the Robin push? As soon as this push comes in, he should fall back. But 
The angle's covered. Jenko finding the first there onto Pulse. Takes down one. The trade's going to come straight back as Webber is probably going to go down here. The knife coming in from Robin. Oh, no, he's going to go use the rifle and he fails. That's a nice kill from Webber, but very disappointing from Robin. Should have taken the opportunity when he had it, and now it's gone. So it's a four versus four again. At least a chance coming in for endpoint. You've got Aaron up on tree. Just watching both angles, he needs a bit of support. Luzza, not the greatest angle for an AWP, really needs to get himself into the open, find himself at a long angle, but it's not too easy as Aaron. The first one to fight will go straight down. Jenko puts a bullet through his head, now Luzza has to go large. He misses the first shot, but can he find the follow-up? Looking in for the shot, but the timing is just against him. And now it's all on Weber. One versus four, he does not fancy that fight. He's heading straight out of there. And Coach Jacob needs to come up with something fast. That was... Just so disappointing from, from what I saw from Endpoint there. I felt like they had the position, they had the advantage going into that. They just were moving just at the wrong time. Fish able to push on through, land the shots and win the Angels. And Endpoint seemed to be crumbling at the first, you know, the first signs of, of, of this strength that Fish are displaying. Cobblestone maybe not their map of choice, but Fish certainly seemed to be at home. Well, it's just so puggy from Fish. They're just going wherever they like, finding kills, finding openings. And even after that initial trade over on the A-bomb, so that should have been an instant rotate as soon as they see Robin, because Robin's always lurking over towards A. As soon as they get that kill, straight over. I mean, you see Luzza playing around in... Uh, in can't call it that, you know, the, the, the yeah. cylinder bit in connector. You know, he needs to get straight over to Chicken Coop. He needs to be straight in, finding the angles, finding the frags, and he's just not doing that. So that AWP wasted for another round and missing that first initial shot and then falling back, not having the confidence in himself. He needs to start waking up again. We have that lurk coming out from Robin. Is Luzza going to detect it this time? It's the exact same play he's done the last six rounds. Get the fourth player over towards B. Get some pressure up. Right now they're playing so far back, it gives Fish the opportunity to move forward without expending any utility. They can get straight in the face of Endpoint and Endpoint really have no response. They're playing up close on, on a site as well, and they're putting two players there, but so many times Fish just haven't even haven't even gone there, except for the pistol round. I think we haven't even really seen them put pressure there. They're prioritizing it. I'm not sure it's paying off for them. Maybe they need to be playing a little bit more closer to connector, get those rotates in faster, try and respond to the pressure that Fish is putting on this B bomb site. See if they can open it up, but already Fish starting to flash and pop down drop as they are lining up for B yet again, and Endpoint just keep giving ground over and over again. They're not contesting these spots. They're not contesting these crossfires, and I think it's really, it's something that's that's really uh, punishing them uh, in, in these rounds and causing them more pain than it's worth. You can see they're lining up for their take now. Yeah, not a big fan of the speed at which Fish is taking here. They've slowed down completely, still expending utility, I suppose. They have got that lurk in Robin now all the way up to connect, but Luz has taken him down. Do not over-rotate off the back of that. Do not feel the pressure. You've got Mighty Max up close. Pulse finds the second, and there he is. Aaron comes in with one. On to Surreal. It's all going well now. The last man alive is Jenko finding one, but he gets shut down by Mighty Max up in that position. This is exactly what we need to see from Endpoint. Get forward. As soon as you see Mighty Max up on uh, on Olaf Meister, you know he can do some work, and that's when they offer the opportunity. They need to get in drop, control the area, get on long. Don't allow Fish to come straight forward and take all of that opportunity because they're doing it every time. Luckily, they find that kill onto Robin who was lurking and instantly they have the confidence and the call to say, right, stick on B, don't move, play your angles. And especially with four players over there, they do not have to worry. Now they have to keep it going. If they get reset here, it could be the end of the first half. If they are able to keep pushing up forwards and playing those close angles. Maybe a little bit too late to push there. You knew that they had the timing on you and Smuya will run Riot just as he is doing there. Two shots with the AWP, two kills go through and Fish, they have the A site. It's very unlikely the Endpoint will even want to go for this retake. I mean, they need to keep those rifles. They've just won, they would go for the full reset. They need the money, they need the guns. They cannot contest this. Pulse, though, able to take Smoothie down. He was feeling a little bit maybe overzealous from those uh, two picks, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's the sort of thing that happens when, you know, you maybe figured out a little bit about what's going on on B. You're like, cool, okay, we've got it. They'd never go for A, and then all of a sudden, oh, here's some pressure. Here's a double kill for Smoothie. And it's, it's just, it just falls, it just falls around their ears, but they are going to go for the save. Pulse manages to grab that AWP as well. I mean, yeah, Weber knew his timing was off there. Why is he taking that peak? You know, every single round, 
there's been pressure put on that position. I, I mean, fair enough, they're holding onto their guns here, but they've been reset again. Luckily, they keep three guns, so they can drop to the, you know, Lanza and Weber, but they need to be finding the frags. That is just not good enough. Allowing Smuya to get in your face like that, he builds confidence. He's a massive confidence player, and you can see right now he's 10 for 6. Mm. He's almost got a 2 KD. He is feeling the confidence, and as soon as you give him that opportunity to get rolling, he's going to take see Luzza step up. We need to see him taking those duels and winning because Luzza, he is an incredibly good orper. He is fantastic, especially defensively. Give him an angle, have him watch it, he'll win the fight. But he's not doing that right now. He needs to get that confidence going for him pretty soon. Otherwise, we're going to see trouble again. Robin Molotoving him off. This time he's holding the angle, being a little bit more aggressive. But he comes in, there's Ooh. the kill. Luzza finding the first. Robin goes down. The follow-up player, is he going to be aware of this? He should be. The flash came in. It was a pretty nice pop flash, which indicates Robin is not alone. Surreal just trying to build up the possessional. Or the uh, Positional, not possessional. Goodness, very similar words. Possession of the map. Very different things. Possession of the map. Well, possessional and positional. I meant positional, but I suppose possessional map control also applies. Certainly does, and they are taking possession of the route on up to A. Luzza. Got the timing on the first pick. Will he be able to get the second here? As Surreal's just ducking on in, but he turns his attention over towards the underpass. Jenko, though, capitalizes on it. Weber around the corner by the cannon. He's going to have a cannon of his own, and it's going to ring on through. But they are trading it on back. Two players versus two. Fish have taken a beating, though. Both of the both of the aggressive tees there now on relatively low HP. Just a single shot from those AKs will be enough to deal with it. See Aaron just lobbing that incendiary, limiting the ground that they can take. Trying to force them off to unfavorable positions, but they're just stacking up in the same spot. They haven't even organized their retake yet. A little bit slow. They both have kits, but you leave people to get into after plant positions. You allow them that more, that little modicum of strength and surreal has done just that. He's able to find the shot and find the second as well. They knew where he was, just wasn't able to convert. Fantastic crossfire there coming in. Surreal He's watching that really, really long angle. They know they're both there because the rotate was fast. They're both spamming away, so they know exactly where they are. They can play that position perfectly. If the long rotate came in, really, when they've both got kits, they should be waiting for that. They should be waiting, playing the long rotate. That way, Surreal has to reposition. He doesn't have that straight, easy crossfire. He has to think about what he's doing a little bit more. And then T-Sack on the site becomes a lot more vulnerable. If you leave that AWP open, you know you can't cross the open angles. You know you can't get in behind him because Surreal can be covering the position. It just makes life so much more difficult. And again, we see Endpoint failing to make the grade. And so back onto pistols. Aaron has a bit of armor to play with, but apart from that, there is nothing to speak of. It's going to be a very, very difficult game for Endpoint if they keep it up like this. Yeah, they are on the CT side, though, and I feel like Endpoint is a team that has slightly stronger T size just in general um, across across most of their map picks. Uh, maybe we'll see that come through, or maybe Fish are just this much better because at the moment 8-1 that's a very very unfavorable scoreline for them on this setup however mighty max is playing up close and personal yet again on plateau at that back of that b long so maybe they'll have a repeat performance from around that they were able to clinch but still on those pistols looking relatively unlikely do have Luzza sitting in the back lines. No one really covering his position. As soon as the smoke fades, he has an opportunity to find maybe one or two kills, but it's a one and done position. As soon as he finds one, he's dead. And there we go. The straight trade comes in. Pulse will find a nice little kill onto Surreal, giving him a gun and the potential to do some more. No flank coming through, so there's four versus three. Make that three versus three as Pulse will succumb to the flames. But Smooth, you know, working his way onto the bomb set needs to be very, very careful of Aaron. He's the player with oh, armor. Oh. And there the kills come. Weber with the one dig. Now it's all on Robin. Now we know he can do it. Question is, is he up to scratch right now? The peak comes in. He's seen Weber. He knows his position hasn't changed, but he has to work his way around here, playing very cleverly, but they know exactly where he is now. They know exactly what he's trying to do. They're going for those wide peaks. There's the one kill. Give him an opportunity. He will take it. Time, though. Watching the angle. Robin needs to be very, very careful. Five seconds left. Like you say, they're just waiting for the time to end. Mighty Max pressuring down now. Aaron comes out dead after time. No money for you, Robin. They do have a little bit of bank left in the coffers, but you can see Fish, they don't have all the money in the world. I mean, you're left on 2.6k on, on Jenko, 
that's not the sort of position you'd expect an 8-2 and two team to be in. So Endpoint have been doing a good job at getting those frags through on the rounds, even if they're losing. Uh, unfortunately, they're not able to convert a lot of the time, but they will be into a full rifle round here. They've got the utility to deal with the aggression from Fish if they're able to put it in the right places. That double MAC-10 indicates to me they're going to be playing this fast and loose, and straight away they're up the side to be sight. They're going back to their roots, they're going back to basics, and Mighty Max isn't up on that plateau to try and contest and try and get that spray down. They're laying it on up. Here comes the starting nades. They're zoning players out. Luzza on the site will find one, but they found two already. Luzza is going to be pushed, and he's not long for this world. Endpoint not looking good already, and they need to fall on back. No way they're going to rotate here. Yeah, not great. It's, but, you know, Luzzer on the site, fantastic. It's a great position when he has support and he didn't have support there. Uh, when you have a team with a massive amount of utility, fish there, obviously the money's good for them. They had the utility. Playing a position that Mighty Max was playing, it's very easy to Molotov or Molotov everywhere else and just check it. And instantly you see those frags just pour on in because of the utility uses. It's fantastic from fish. They're obviously very drilled on that execute. And again, end point to come to the might of fish. Keeping four guns alive as well. Robin get to hunt himself down an M4. So they've got three rifles, one AWP. I mean, Pulse and Weber can hold on to those guns. There's no AWP for them. There's really not a huge amount of hope. I mean, fair enough, they've got some utility. But going into this next round, they need to start shutting fish down, get a bit aggressive. We haven't seen a single play where Endpoint have crossed the mid-half of the map. There hasn't been a single time they've crossed that mid-half. They've never pushed forward. They've never taken possessional. <clears throat> Positional control of the map. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to learn the difference between those two words, or perhaps right. just use the right one. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Well, we'll find out. Um Something as well, as I, as I highlighted at the start of the round, Endpoint had utility. They had those smokes, they had the incendiary grenades as well, and they didn't put them down. They didn't put them down early into the early into the game, didn't force out smokes or molotovs from fish and trade that utility. And it and it came back to bite them, as you say. Like they just they just pushed straight on through. They were given that ground, and that's exactly where fish shine. Endpoint, you need to step it up with that use of the utility. Make sure you're getting it into the right places. If they'd have thrown a, 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 an incendiary down to the under the arch there, that would have just done so much damage or forced the push to come out in an in, inopportune moment. They could have done so much work and they just didn't. They just didn't do it, and it was slightly frustrating to see. Yeah, I think it's fair to say it's not a particularly dynamic CT side so far. I mean, there are guns, but Jenko taking down Weber again. Drop controls handed over. Pulse will be able to trade it out, but that's still. A one-man advantage. Laza finding Rob in there. That's the lurk down of the bomb. Looks like it wanted to head over towards the uh, bomb site, but with that kill coming through, perhaps now questioning themselves. A minute left on the clock. They need to start making a move, but this is a great position from Smoothie. You see this from all the time. Just finding positions no one's going to expect, being in places you don't want him to be, and this is a control if he can find this kill onto Laza. This is the orc battle we've all been waiting for. But it's not going to happen. Maybe next week. Aaron looking to come through. The smoke goes down. And now those two players completely zoned off. Watch the smoke. Pulse has just gone straight on through. But the flash is perfect. One kill comes through. Now they need to get on the site. Luzza is still alive. He's hiding away. They have no idea he's there. As soon as he peeks out, they're in trouble. T-Sec will find Pulse. Take him down. Oh. But there's Luzza. The bomb goes down. And now this is a very, very difficult round for Jenko to win. He's got a player on both his sides. Clowns to the left of him. Joker goes down. And now Jenko in a one versus one. Can he find Luzza? He knows his position. But Luzza has the bomb, and that is so, so key. He gets it. Not quite key enough. The bomb's going to be going down, but oh, has to happen now. Nice. Is the shot. Luzza comes in, finds the kill, and that is three to nine. Fish, one, two, three. It looked like a strong round. It looked like a strong clutch, but Luzza holds on for one more round. Ten kills for the man. A very strong hold from Luzza there on the A site. As you said, it came back to bite them. They weren't able to check fully over the site, uh, which meant that he was able to just ring through. A nice pick off onto the bomb carrier, forced Fish into an, uh, an unfavorable matchup there, uh, which meant that they were able to, to hold the ground to force the tempo of the fight. Of course, there were only about 20 seconds left on the clock because Fish have slowed their game down a lot here. Um, and that meant that they had to, they were forced to, to play to the tune of Endpoint. Whilst they were able to get the frags through, they just weren't able to do it quite quick enough. They weren't able to get the ground when they needed it, and Endpoint were able to capitalize. So three rounds on the board now. They're really going to need to look to pick up the rest of these as well if they want to have a decent shout into the next half. Yeah, Two-man drop control, though. This is fantastic. Pulse now playing up close. Smoke is going to force him back. There's still Mighty Max in position to do some damage. Nice kill coming in from Aaron there as t -Sat goes down. Now just the hold, the drop control will come in. Mighty Max needs to be a little careful. Molotov goes down. 
So connector control given up as Smooya finds Aaron playing too close for comfort as Mighty Max under pressure now just about backing off, keeping hold of his life as Robin takes down Pogs. Mighty Max now needs to come alive. He's sneaking through that smoke, playing a dangerous game. He'll find one tagged up still, but he's doing some damage, leaving it in a three versus three. Absolutely enormous kill from Mighty Max there, but on such low HP, he needs to find himself a good position. Surreal with the AK-47 just picked up. It's still a three versus two as Robin finds Laza, but this looks so much more difficult oh, now, no. especially with Smooya boosted up. There's very little that can be done, and Weber will be taken with a headshot. Nice round coming in from Fish, and again exerting their dominant Smooya. Two kills in the round. Although Laza looked like he was picking it up, he needs to carry on. He's having a fantastic game so far, but he needs to be able to trump Smooya. And it's just not happening. And I think, you, well, you said it. I mean, boosted is the right word. Um, Smooya just uh, taking taking the head off Mighty Max as he pushed out and just peeked the whole site all at once uh, with a FAMAS. And it's like, you know there's three players waiting for you to, to push out of that position. You're going to be being, being looked at. And uh, taking that wide peak and that fast peak just wasn't the right decision there. Backing off and saving, I would have been much more in favor of. I mean, you've got the the, the semi for the, the quasi buy here um, coming through for endpoint, but Having, even having a FAMAS into the next round would have been a massive bonus, uh, allowed them a little bit try, isn't it? They've got no money. They've got nothing. So going into the last round, they're going to have absolutely nothing again. It's going to have to be two forces in a row, which is somewhat questionable considering they haven't been winning rounds with guns. True. Robin, checking the angles. He isn't actually going to spot out the player hiding behind those hay bales. Luzza could take some aggression out on towards the fish ranks. He's pushing out behind them. He's got the full flank going through. It's just a matter of time as to whether he gets the shot off. I think he spotted someone, but wasn't able to get the shot down. There goes Smoo. He's playing a little bit up close. He's biding his time, waiting for his team to rotate on through. But he gets spotted out, and Yenko takes it down. Oh, they're going to be pretty happy with that one as they start their aggression up onto the A site. Weber is playing behind that van, trying to get the close picks through. Does get spotted through, but the headshot lands from the 5-7. It's T-Stack and Yenko. Have a little bit of a fury swipe through the A site. 11 rounds now on the board. Fish, one, two, three. Really putting the hurt down on endpoint now. It just absolutely baffs me there. Laza spots two players, and still there's no rotate coming over towards the A bomb site. Mm. Still those pistols are hanging back, and so it's, it's down to Weber. And, uh, you know, Weber's pistols have been very crisp so far this game. The rest of it, not so much, but his pistols at least have been pretty good. You can't rely on one man. You've got to be able to hold the site. Luzza maybe overextended there a little bit, was a little bit hungry for the kills, and he got found out for it. And again, they're on pistols. Weber up close. He's trying to do what he can in this smoke. Smooth has crept on through. Oh, he's not going to find a thing. Surreal shutting him down. Pulse will follow. And this game is looking pretty dire. Good damage being done there by Mighty Max, but still, the kills aren't coming. He will put the smoke down to give himself a bit of cover. Jump straight out the window, but there's nothing he can do. The Deagle definitely not a weapon for movement. Oh. And Laza, he'll find one, but that's about all he'll find is Aaron, the last man alive. Can he get any damage done? He'll find one kill. Not a one Deagle entirely, but it'll do the job. And the remaining two players, at least, are one shots. Martov goes in. There's armor to play with Aaron. At least has an opportunity here. He's not out for the count just yet. Creeping up. He doesn't know where T-Sack is. But T-Sack knows oh. where he is. Kill comes in. Now all onto Surreal. The man with the fright. Oh. The spray could have connected there, but it doesn't work out for Aaron. And it's going to be the 12-3 half for Fish. A very strong showing on their T side for Fish. One, two, three. That's the sort of thing that, as Endpoint, competing for that top spot in Group A, you don't want to be coming up against. That's 12, that's, I mean, 12-3, it doesn't matter if you if you have the best T-side in the world. That is a that is a huge disadvantage moving forwards. I would I would certainly be disappointed if I was sat on that Endpoint roster. I can only imagine how they're actually feeling. Yeah, not a great start there for Endpoint. And it just gives them a mountain to climb going into the second half now. They have to fight so much harder than they did at the beginning of the game, of course. Fish are going to be feeling so confident. They're going to be feeling absolutely great. And I'm on the endpoint side here, as you can see, which means by law, by contract, I have to support endpoint. I don't have a choice. Um, so for me, as, as the endpoint fan, really, this is this is troubling. 
Yeah, well, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my with my pick at this stage. Uh, the fish one, two, three skies really doing me proud. But now it's all in Endpoint's hands to try and bring it back on this T side. This pistol round is really do or die here. If they don't pick this up, that's pretty much curtains for them. Uh, if they're able to, though, you know, they're not out of it just yet. We've seen some comebacks come through already in Group A as well uh, in, in some more than dire circumstances. So maybe they'll be able to emulate those. But over onto the A site again. This is exactly what Fish123 ran. But it seems like Fish have the run of the site again. And they're just shutting it down. No doors left open. And they're slamming the windows on the fingers of Endpoint as they just reach on in. Just getting shut out straight away. Weber goes down. Now it's just Mighty Max in a 1v4. Has the Glock. Finds one. Turns the corner. Playing up close with the Glock. Not the worst of situations, but takes the long fight and Smoother wins it out. Yeah, so really, unless we see something incredible for Endpoint. Not Endpoint, by the way. Endpoint ESL UK. Let's make oh. that clear. Uh, we're, you know, they're going to struggle uh, getting back into this. They are going with the force by coming in, but fish can just go fast they can get in their face use that utility and you can see they are prioritizing utility here close it out quickly don't mess about show a really dominant showing against endpoint and the rest of the teams it sends a message this is like cutting off the toes it really sends a message and uh, i believe there is a second i don't know best what messages one. you're sending oh <laughs> i'm sending some serious <laughs> messages some <laughs> this is how i text and send toes some people's toes with a little message on them forget emojis yeah. it's all about the toes these days all about toes my toes is <laughs> yeah, pistols to play with. Not a huge amount going on here for Endpoint, especially on that T side. They just want to rush in, try and get themselves a couple of frags, but they're not playing the long game. They want to win this round. Splitting up like this, I do not like to see. They're trying, well, they're trying their best to find these opening frags, but they're just not being given anything by Fish123. They're finding their inner Endpoint and it's playing really passively. Except for Robin, of course, playing up by that drop, which is something we didn't see Endpoint do in that first half. But it seems like Fish have opted to give over a little bit of ground. He's taking the fight, though. And now Endpoint moving over towards the B side of the map. They've left a lurk for Fish over towards A. They're looking to find the drop to entry, but Robin's there oh. with the MP9, and it is devastating for them. Yanko finds one, gets traded back, but they've already lost two. Smooya with a team kill. It's not going to matter, though. Surreal finds the double, and that is going to be Fish. One, two, three, putting 14 rounds on the board. Very close now to the victory. They can smell it. Yeah, they can more than smell it. At this point, they can taste it. Fish on 14. They're looking to close out match point. And Endpoint again going for the Force. They know at this point it's too late. If they don't win this round, they might as well not bother. And so this is a very, very key round for Endpoint. Again, with very little to play with. I, I just don't see it happening unless they go very, very fast. Like you say, Fish not giving them anything. t -Sack, they're a little bit aggressive, but he's been fantastically crisp this game. Absolutely devastatingly crisp, in fact. And uh, t -Sack, not one of the players you always look to to put up the massive frags. He's a consistent player, but he's not one of those star power players. Now he's playing like one. And he's giving his team the opportunity to win this game pretty easily. I mean, Endpoint have been giving very little resistance. Considering this is their main starting roster, it is not a good sign. Weber here looking for an opportunity. Robin flashing himself. Isn't going to work out too nicely. Going for the next peak. And now drop clear. It's looking like another B plate. We need to see this death squad come together. Try and get some work done. But the jump peaks come out. You know it's very, very difficult to 1D going to jump peak. And so this is just playing all into the hands of Fish. One, two, three, the Swedish team. <laughs> the, Sw the Swedes are certainly uh, playing very, very well so far. This is not the scoreline I was expecting. This is not the match I was expecting to see between these two teams. But it seems like Fish are swimming on through. But so are Pulse and the rest of Endpoint. So they do get traded out. Three players left alive, those Deagles. Hand cannon sat in the hands of Endpoint, and you can't miss that spray, Smooya. Mighty Max able to land the shot with the Deagle. They pick up an M4 in a three versus three. They've got 27 seconds. They're moving over to the A site. They've left two players from Fish over on the A, over on the B, sorry. t sack though, that star player you were talking about finds one, two, and maybe a third, but no, he's able to be shut down by the M4 in the hands of Mighty Max. It's all on you, my friend. One, and that's it. Fish, one, two, three, take map point. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I mean, Again, th this is what I was talking about. There's the death squad mentality. You see them all going to drop, piling in. Robin didn't know what's on top of him. But when you only have pistols, it is very, very difficult to play effectively after you get that opening pick. It's very, very difficult to first of all secure the rifle and then to do something with it. You see someone go in to try and secure the rifle and instantly Surreal shuts them down. Instantly, they're given that negative feedback that they're not coming anywhere near that bomb site or that gun. 
And now it's a very simple game of sit back and wait for Endpoint to come to us because they know it's like shooting fish one, two, three in a barrel. Well, not quite so simple, apparently, as Aaron able to open it up onto the B-bomb site. Pushes out, gains some ground now. The rest of his team might be able to there, be there to back him up, but they are a little bit slow on the rotate. Does get himself an M4 for his trouble and going to chuck the one over to Mighty Max. Down on 10 HP, you're not really going to be do, able to do enough work to make it worth your while holding onto that rifle. So a nice swap coming out from Endpoint. And they are now stacking up towards B, but Jenko has spotted it all out. And the spray comes through. A lot of damage done, but no kills. There's still five players left alive for Endpoint. So they push on through, but Smooth is there. Misses the second shot, and Aaron heads the head. That's going to be a nice opening coming out from Endpoint as they leave just T-Stack now in a one versus three. Rifles abound for Endpoint as they get the plant onto the B-bomb site. Is he going to go for the re? take he could just bide his time sit back wait for exit frags but no he's pushing out a drop he is going to go for this one could be the winning play or it could be the most silly thing he's done all day and it's going to be that one the yeah. second choice is going to be the one Luzzo goes for i mean they you know they've got the money to play with but what do they actually the fish one two three bank is not looking as bolstered as potentially it should be it's going to be an eco for them or a force buy why not uh, I would rather see them eco at this point. There's, there's no point giving endpoint needless rounds, so I'd much rather see them not force buying. But that being said, we know they're a very strong team. If they get a couple of picks, who knows where this round could go. And I suppose that's the mentality. They're confident, they're feeling it. Why not play some games? I mean, if we'd seen an HE grenade in that last round, that would have been a completely different round. We would have seen that absolutely demolishing endpoint. They were all low HP. We had a fantastic spray from Jenko, but nothing to follow it up. So real now, close and personal. The CZ will not wreak havoc. Wreck havoc on this occasion. It's going to be Aaron once again opening this one up for his team. There we go. Weber finds his second now as Robin takes a fall. The B-bomb site pretty much fully open as the A site starts to open up as well. TSAC goes down. Now, Fish have two players left standing. Smoo, you're in Jenko. You say this round's pretty much endpoints either way, so a little bit of an overinvestment into this round means that Fish are giving over these pointless rounds. But when you're sat at 15 4, you're pretty confident that you're going to be able to take it back uh, in into, into just one round that you need. That's all you need. Uh, and as you say, they didn't need to go for the force there. Maybe a little bit overconfident, but now they should be sat back and going, okay, okay, right, we'll full save here. We'll go for the full buy into the next round and see uh, if we can just win that one out on the rifles. And by all accounts, they should win it. I mean, it's, if it, the way they've been playing, they should absolutely have the run of this one. Um, Endpoint, they need a miracle at this stage to, to get all these rounds back. Strange things have happened. And playing like this, Fish123, do you need to be a little bit careful? I'd like to see a bit of discipline in this next round. Just say, right. No need to spend any money. Okay, have a couple of pistols. That's about all they need. Is Luzza going to die here? I think he might. Luzza is desperately trying to get into that corner. No, he's oh, he gets fine. It. They're fine. They're all fine. The terrorists won without taking any casualties. A little bit of damage done, but that's about all. And fantastically important is the economy. So if Endpoint lose a round, they'll... Oh, wait, no, they won't because it's 15-5. So economy doesn't matter. Fish, <laughs> one, two, three. Very, very important now. They're just disciplined. Robin buying a Zoice is uh, hopefully a miss buy. I don't think it is, unfortunately, but uh, you know these things happen. Wasn't there a, uh, a fun little bug with a Zeus that you could check behind thin walls with it? If you throw the Zeus at the wall, the player on the other side of it picks it up. I don't follow Counter-Strike that in depth. Well, there, I, I know there was a bug. I don't know if it's, been, if it's been patched out, but you can actually check to see if there's someone there. This might be what he's going for, waiting for a sound and throwing it up to allow his teammates to maybe come in and peek, uh, if there was a teammate there to actually peek for him, but uh, there isn't. So instead, he's going to be looking for the cheeky Zeus on the drop, uh, but already endpoint opening it up onto Smuya. Yeah, nice easy kill. Don't need to take any risks, play together as a team, look for those picks, and then play off the back of it. A bit of aggression coming through from Surreal here. He's going to be playing up against an orb. Robin literally burning himself from 100 to 0. Laza finding the kill there onto Surreal and Aaron just cleaning up over on that B-bomb site. It's all on T-Sack, one versus the world. He will find himself a cheeky little dink, but that's about all he's going to get. 3k for Aaron, padding those stats. And six rounds on the board for endpoint. Somewhat better, but... There's a long, long road ahead, and the buy is back for Fish. No AWP coming out, though, very important to mention. Yeah, so uh, if they hadn't have gone for that force, they probably would have been able to get at least full M4s here, maybe even an AWP buy coming through for one of their players. Uh, so that force really coming to bear now if they, if they were looking to take a strong victory going on here. But 
Instead, they have one UMP, one FAMAS as well. And the aggression from Endpoint goes through, but Smoothie is ready and waiting. Only gets one. They trade it back. T-Sac pushing down from the side. Could get through the smoke and get a cheeky pick, but he's just biding his time. And Robin is the first to take the face, and he's able to get the kill what? off. What? 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 Max. what? He saw him. T-Sac, he saw him. He saw him. T-Sac, okay, fine. He gets he the kill. Anyway. <laughs> he saw. He saw him, dude. Pulse the last man alive. We'll find one there onto Surreal. Two players still gunning for his position Six and points. no bomb in his control. Like you say, he's going to go for the reload. Got plenty of time. A minute and 10 seconds on the clock. The YP comes out. Why, Jenko? Why? It doesn't make any sense, but he's done it anyway. Now T-Sac, the last man alive. And he goes oh. in and it's in now. Oh. Kobe in the bag. And that is T-Sac closing it out. This is not the drilled endpoint we saw under Immy's rule. This